Okay, so in a previous video, we saw that the vast majority of carbon dioxide is transported through the bloodstream in the form of bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. So in, you know, in the tissues or in the body, right, it's trying to get rid of carbon dioxide, and so it converts it to bicarbonate, carries it over to the lungs, and then in the lungs, the bicarbonate is converted back into carbon dioxide and released, and we, then we just kind of breathe it out. So you know, before we look into this relationship in depth, i got to bring up... The old cellular respiration equation. I know this thing can sometimes give people nightmares, but uh, it'll be brief, I promise. So, all right, uh, remember that the point of all of this is going to be to, right, to take this glucose and to sort of convert it into ATP. And along the way, you're using up oxygen and you're creating excess amounts of carbon dioxide. Okay, so. Uh, as you you know, as the need for ATP increases, you're producing lots and lots of carbon dioxide. So, you know, let's explore a situation briefly where, right, let's say that you're at the gym, yeah. So you're at the gym. If you're a dude, that means you know probably trying to get ripped, pump iron, get huge, whatever. If you're a girl, you're on a treadmill trying to burn as many calories as possible. Well, a couple things happen. The first is that your body temperature is going to increase. The second is that you're going to increase your concentration, or we'll say the partial pressure, since that's how we measure gas concentration, of carbon dioxide is going to increase. And this is going up because your body's struggling to get as much energy as it can, and when it makes energy, it produces lots of CO2. At the same time, you're obviously using more and more oxygen, but uh, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. So this increase in carbon dioxide is going to happen. So let's see, you know, what happens when, when that occurs. To do so, we'll go back up here and we'll look at the equation for how carbon dioxide is converted into bicarbonate. So this happens in two steps, really. Uh, the first one is here to here. And this occurs in red blood cells. So this carbon dioxide, after you work out, it's released by your cells, it diffuses into the capillaries, and once it's in capillaries, it kind of diffuses into a red blood cell, and then this happens. Carbon dioxide mixes with water to form something called carbonic acid. So this acid, right, or this, I guess you would say, this reaction is facilitated by an enzyme called carbonic acid anhydrase. I can't even tell you this guy's super important. And the carbonic anhydrase is in red blood cells. So because that enzyme's there, that's where this part happens. This second part is uh, more spontaneous and sort of just occurs. It can occur inside the red blood cells or it can occur uh, outside the red blood cells in the blood. But the point is that this carbonic acid is pretty quickly dissociates into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. And it's these guys that we want to focus on right now. The, carbon di the relationship between carbon dioxide and this proton ion right here. So like I said before, you're at the gym, you're working out. You increase the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced because you're trying to make lots of energy. This increase in carbon dioxide here is going to cause an increase in the bicarbonate here inside the red blood cells. And then this increase is going to lead to an increase here and an increase here. So as your carbon dioxide levels increase, your hydrogen ion concentration or hydrogen proton levels increase as well. This makes a more acidic environment. And hopefully you remember the relationship between acidity and pH. Remember that pH and hydrogen concentrations are inversely related. So you get a decrease in pH that occurs. Right. This is, again, super, super, super important. All right, um, here we go. This carbon dioxide increase leads to a decrease in pH. And the reason that this is sort of really important is because your body is monitoring carbon dioxide levels and pH levels. Um, you know, everybody thinks, oh, well, when we wake up, I mean, when we work out, you know, we have to, we start breathing faster because we're trying to get more oxygen. You know, that happens when you breathe faster, but in reality, your body's not responding to the drop in oxygen. It's responding to the increase in carbon dioxide and the decrease in pH. Your body's saying, whoa, 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 I've got too much ion here, I've got too much proton, and I've got too much carbon dioxide. I need to get rid of this stuff. 
So it tells you, it monitors this, and then makes you start breathing faster to sort of dump all this stuff out. All right, so remember that increase in breathing called hyperventilation is a direct result of this increase in carbon dioxide and the decrease in pH. And remember that these two are directly related. If your pH goes down, that means that your carbon dioxide must be high. And if you get a problem that shows you a really high concentration or partial pressure of carbon dioxide, you should just know, oh, well, that means that the pH is low because this is something that kind of happens by itself spontaneously uh, in the blood. Okay.